Shalom. My name is Oluwad Bemileke Adewe. I'm reaching you from the best country in the world, <laughs> Nigeria. And of course, I'm in uh, New Jerusalem, also known as Redemption Camp. Massive privilege to be here on my own side. And a thank you to Pastor and Pastors Mrs. Ojo for pulling me in into this gathering of champions, of warriors, of great men and women. And, you know, I'm probably the least of all of this because I'm just a messenger. Um, it's a privilege to be part of this three-day program. And um, I cannot but say thank you once again. Uh, the theme of God of Wonders is huge. It's huge. It's huge. And um, my own topic is chosen by God. Let us pray. Father, Lord, I say thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity we have to gather to be able to share your word, to listen and to learn underneath your feet. Father, I ask that your Holy Spirit would come and reduce all distractions, reduce and remove all attractions that might distract us from seeing him and hearing from him. We ask Almighty God that today there won't be any phone calls that would come and pull us away when our word is coming out. There will not be any WhatsApp messages, any Instagram notifications, or any TikTok flashes. We ask, oh God, that you help us to remain unfocused with you at this time for this period and even beyond. Let us gain something, Almighty God, both the speaker, both the listener, both the hearers. Let us receive a word, oh God, that will turn our situation around. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' precious mighty name, we've prayed. Amen and amen. Once again, thank you for this privilege to be here. Um, my topic is chosen by God, but I'm going to just stay with me. On the journey, just stay with me. We're going on a journey, we're going on a ride. Um, I believe the lineup is just loaded with pastors and um, ministers that are seeds of um, other men of God. I think some people refer to it as PKs, but I don't like that because I'm his pastor's kids. And kids are usually the children of goats. So we prefer seeds as it's been referred to across the, the Bible um and our guide as well many references to seeds is said um david said it many other people said it so we prefer seeds so you are not a goat in jesus name because goats uh, will be separated from sheep further down the line so be careful pick your own s pick the right s don't pick a goat pick a right s we're not referring to greatest of all time either because um you might be great for the wrong reasons so stay with me Bible text that I'm jumping on because I, uh, because I'm a seed, <laughs> is Psalm 72, verse 18. Psalm 72, verse 18. The Bible says, praise forever the over God. This is the Passion Translation, the Passion Translation. It says, praise forever the over God, the God of Israel. He is the one and only God of wonders, surpassing every expectation. Praise Psalm 72, verse 18. Psalm 72, verse 18. Praise forever, God Jehovah, the God of Israel, the God of the United States, the God of this whole world, is the one and only God of wonders, surpassing every expectation, every single expectation. So what are your expectations right now? What are you being bounded by? What are you being gagged by? And then you don't know that you have a God that can lift you up and help you surpass all of those expectations. My name is Leke. That's the short version. The full version is Oluwagbimi Leke. Um, you can then put anything you want. My dad is a mathematician, so God inspired a name to, from him or to him from heaven um, that allows you to put the letter N. For those who know what the N stands for in mathematics, it means you're raised to a power of something. So the name Oluwagbimi Leke now gives you the ability to have an N at the end. That N means whatever it comes, Whatever comes, whatever the situation, whatever the environment, whatever the challenges might be, the end allows you to overcome it because it doesn't it doesn't stop. So Oluwagbemilike means God has lifted me high above. It now leaves a dash for you to fill in the space. So when you get to anything that anyone is expecting you to overcome, whatever the challenges might be, Oluwagbemilike, God has lifted me high above depression you can just put it in there I'm, i'll loan you my name for for this period you can put anything in there god has lifted me high above those credit card debts god has lifted me high above anxiety 
God has lifted me high above thieves, unfriendly people. God has lifted me high above whatever it is that is negative. But then God can then also lift me high above and drop me into whatever is positive. He can drop me into peace. He can drop me into progression. He can drop me into his promises. He can drop me into palliatives for those who know what's going on in Nigeria. He can drop me into prosperity. But my God, he will drop me into a private jet. So if we're, if we're going along that line, there's nothing that God cannot drop you into. So check your name. Make sure you have the right name because you are chosen by God. And the reason that you have been chosen by God is because he created you in the first place. No one ever creates anything and then just dump them and let them waste away. There is no point. You shouldn't have even created in the first place. And God is not a God of waste. So you are not created to be a waste. There's a purpose for you. There's a need for you. There's a usefulness for you. When there is no longer a need, when the time is done, the individual is softly removed from this earth. You are still watching me right now, meaning that there is still a reason why you're here. There is still a purpose for you. You are not condemned yet. You are not done. You still have a time. You still have a purpose. You still have an assignment. You still have things to achieve. You still would be celebrated. You will still would be advanced. You would still be welcomed. You will still be promoted. So you are not done. So tell yourself, I am chosen by God. Tap it in. I am chosen by God. I am for God. I am liked by God. He still needs me. He's still going to use me. Regardless of whatever they've written, whatever they have said, whatever it is that they have been throwing your way, you can keep dodging it because God has you on his side and God is going to keep using you. Can I get an amen? Can I get an amen? Can I get an amen? So this is part of the wonders of God for his own chosen persons. I'm just going to give you, I think, four or five wonders of God for his chosen persons. Wonder number one, God's love for you. God loves you more than you can ever imagine. That is the, one of the wonders of God for his own chosen person. In John 3, 16, he made it clear. He made it absolutely clear that he sent his only begotten son. That is why he did not allow Adam to um, Abraham to kill Isaac. Because his, Isaac would have taken that away from him. He ensured that he was the only one that could do that move. And because of you, he sent his only begotten son to you for your own purpose so that you can give. So you have to make sure that you're willing to receive that love as well. We just finished a season of love about a month ago and everyone, you know, got roses. Some people got roses, some people got nothing. Some people um, were the ones buying and nobody bought for them. You know, it kind of happens. But in this case, God made sure that including the buyer, including the, 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 the receiver, everybody gets something. God's love is one of his wonders for you. So be ready to receive the love. If your heart is sealed, the love cannot come in. So open your heart, open your hands, open your mind to receive his love. That is one of the wonders that God will give to whoever is chosen of him. Wonder number two. Wonder number two is the miracle of salvation. Miracle of salvation through Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ, the son. The Bible makes it clear. It says, no greater love has no man except the one that is willing to lay down his life for a friend. Jesus has already laid his life down for you that is listening. He did it intentionally. And every single time you even walk out on him, he will lay his life down again. He will come and save you. When Peter was drowning, he went out there and he grabbed his hand out like, no, I'm not going to let you die. Not on my watch. Many people have drowned, but God did not let you drown. That is because of the miracle of salvation, the wonder of salvation. It belongs to you. It is for you. It is for you and I. We can still be saved. We can still be saved. Very cool. Um, a wonder number two for the chosen one. Sorry, three. Wonder number three for the chosen one. For the chosen one, is the assurance of eternal life. Is the assurance of eternal life. The Bible makes it clear, as um, one of the apostles was saying, it said that I may know him, the power of his resurrection. Which means if if the person that has showed you love and you have accepted through salvation, it guarantees that you have eternal life. You. You cannot die with the rest. You will not go to waste like the rest, but rather there's a there's there's an opening for you. There's a space for you, for you to have eternal life. That is one of the wonders of God, the ability to ensure that you receive eternal life. It doesn't end in this world. In fact, I look forward to when we get to heaven because then I can travel at the same speed the angels move. So I can visit Saturn 
I can even go to another galaxy entirely and just see what's going on. Find out maybe there's another Earth. Maybe it's called Earth in. I don't know. We might have another whole combination entirely and find out how they are doing out there. Then, one of the privileges that um, that the Chosen One receives, one of the wonders that the Chosen One receives is the privilege of prayers. The ability for you to speak directly to God without a medium, without a person in between. When Jesus died, the veil was torn from top to bottom, not from bottom to top. Today, you have to go and find your own Bible passages yourself. If you notice, I'm quoting it, but I'm not telling you from where. So you go and find your Bible text yourself. The veil was torn from top to bottom, not from bottom up, which means everyone is trying to say, it. we want to give you direct access to communication from now on. We're tearing it from our own end. Whatever was the barrier between us, we're tearing it from top down so that you can have ability to speak because regardless of how hard you try to cut it you will not get to us that's why they did not succeed in the tower of babel because they were trying to build from bottom to top but in this situation god even says we will tear this thing down from top to bottom so that you can speak to us and one of the first things that jesus said when he was teaching before he left because he knew that there would be an opportunity for you to communicate with god which is prayer he said pray ye in this manner our father who art in heaven, which means you can talk directly. You don't need an intermediary anymore. You don't need a prophet to pray for you. You don't need anyone to do anything for you because you are chosen. You will be straight from your mouth to God's ears. So, because of my time and I'm pushing, I keep going. One of the other wonders that the privileged one, the chosen one would receive is the power of faith. The power of faith. The Bible says that now faith is the substance of things of for and evidence of things not seen. The power of faith. Faith will guarantee you to receive that which God has in stock for you, but you not withholding yourself from actually getting it. There is a provision that is already for you. You might not see it yet, but you have to move. You have to move into that space so that you can get access to what it is that is yours. If you keep remaining in the same corner, then heaven would not let you see the wonders of the provision that is already for you. You know what's so funny? There's a man in the Bible, and I'll let you do your research. It was funny. He was loaded. It was rich. He had tons. He had bank accounts. He had the latest Rolls Royce. He had a mansion. Um, his company was on point. Uh, I mean, he's on, you know, he's on the on the on the Dow. He's on there. He's listed on the on the SME 500. He's everywhere. He, he was he was fully loaded. Then he approached Jesus. He approached Jesus and he asked him one very simple question. He said, how does a man get eternal life? I mean, I have everything that I need. I have everything that I can ever want. But the interesting thing is this. Jesus told him what to do. He told him that you have to let go of all your wealth and then make sure you follow Christ. You know what was painful to me in this whole process? You were speaking to eternal life directly in front of you, but you did not even see him. You didn't acknowledge it because you could not see because you did not have that faith that would open your eyes to see that the person, the solution that you need was directly in front of you. And I pray for whoever is watching this today, that you're just watching to pass time, not knowing that the solution that you need is already being spoken to you, is already being shared to you. Maybe you were being distracted. Maybe you should rewind. Maybe you should ask for a copy of this and, and watch it again at the end. Your solution is actually in front of you. And I pray you would receive it and see it in Jesus' name. So, the, um, one of the other pointers, I'm not sure which number I am right now. One of the other pointers uh, that the chosen one has as a wonderful gift from God is the gift of peace. The gift of peace. The Bible says many things about peace, but it says the peace, it says may the peace of God that passes all understanding be unto you. There is a peace that is beyond other peace. There's peace that you get temporarily and there's a peace you get permanently. Those who have peace genuinely and permanently do not have to deal with anxiety. You don't have to do with panic attacks. You don't have to do with depression. They don't have to do with anything. They're just calm. They're just calm. Have you seen some of those videos on, on, on social media where there's some dude in the corner and you know something is going down in a shop or in a store or somebody is about to be beaten up or someone is being beaten and it's just that one dude in the corner that just seems not to be bothered that's what i call real peace because whatever the ruckus whatever the issue is going on beside them they're just so calm in some cases they might even move 
their leg out of the way when the person that just got slapped is about to fall down. That's because they don't want anything to disturb their peace. That is peace that passes all understanding because you're wondering how come they can be in this middle of a storm, like when Jesus was sleeping in the boat and there was a storm, but he was so calm. And then eventually he could only give what was inside of him. So you can only give the peace that is inside of you if you have peace. So which means if you don't have any peace, then you can't spread it to others. Add it to your prayer point for today. Now, Lord, I need your own kind of peace. This peace that moves and still storms. The peace that walks for me everywhere I go. If I step into a place and there's a problem in that situation, my peace should move and then calm everything down. As I'm moving, there should be a radius around me that is just moving peace everywhere I go. So if there's a problem, if I get there, there will be peace. If there's a riot, as I'm moving closer to that place, because I'm losing peace, peace will go ahead of me and then clear the grounds for me. The Bible makes it clear that goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. Those are two angels. I can command them that push this peace to move ahead of me as my escorts before I get there. The president of USA, anytime he's flying um, the Air Force One, he has escorts. They are usually fighter jets that move around. Their purpose is to ensure a peace and smooth flight. So I can have the same working for me on a spiritual note. I don't need to physically have fighter jets that are burning fuel um, around me. F-35s or F-32s or F-anything. So, um, what's the point I'm on right now? I'm on point number, uh, you will figure it out. Okay, so we've talked about peace. And then I'll give you this one. This probably is, is the last one. Yeah, this is my point on the last one. Your own Christian experience. After you get the peace that passes all understanding, your own Christian experience, your own personal relationship experience for the chosen one you cannot be chosen for no reason there's always the one but they can't be the one for the right reason or one for the wrong reason anytime you think about the stories across the bible there's always the one for and the one against you are a chosen one let it be that you're the chosen one for the right reason pharaoh was a chosen one just so that he would be able to be used to teach the rest of the world and uh, 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 as an example or a case study of went against God and tried to challenge God. God needed someone to be that one for the wrong reason. There was also someone that was the one for the right reason. The one that came back to say thank you out of the 10 that Jesus healed. He was the one for the right reason. There are many wrong reasons. There were two brothers. One came and divided the company up and made sure the company shares dropped to absolutely nothing because he took the values of the company and it went to waste it. He's marked as the prodigal son. Even though he's been back home before he passed, he was still the chosen one for the wrong reason. The one that stayed was the chosen one for the right reason because he showed commitment, he showed focus, he showed loyalty. So you can see the one that is for the right reason and the one for the wrong reason. There were even two brothers in which the mom schemed and scammed and made sure that one of them got the blessings of the bigger one. And it is necessarily not the fault. It was because life played out. One person sold their bad tribe just because they wanted some mashed potato with some gravy on it, which might be referred to as porridge. Yeah, that is exactly what porridge is. The mashed potato, in some cases, is not mashed with some gravy on it. Don't be the chosen one for the wrong reason. Be the chosen one for the right reason. That is going to be our whole ultimate prayer point. And then God can also choose just to select someone and make them the chosen one. God can have mercy and pick someone and make them the chosen one. He picked Mary as a virgin and made her the chosen one. Yeah, he picked David out of everybody else because in the lineage of David in the family is the firstborn that should have been picked. But no, he was excused and David was picked as the one that would be anointed. He picked Samuel for the right reason. God can pick you to be his chosen one today. It just depends on you if you're willing to surrender to him so that you can be the chosen one the chosen ones get to experience all the wonders of God. You get to experience his salvation. You get to experience his peace. You get to experience the ability to communicate with him directly without any issues. You get to experience all the goodness and the things that we've mentioned in the last um, um, 10, 15 minutes. And then you get to experience internal life with him. The place where you're secured, where you're guaranteed that after all of this, everything will be fine. You also get to experience all the benefits of being part of his kingdom while you were here on earth. 
So you will not just be a chosen one for chosen sake. The chosen one is always treated better, always treated specially. Like Joseph, that was a chosen one out of his many brothers. He got the coats of many colors, which means that there was no season that he wasn't in tune. He had a color to be at the right place at the right time for every season. He was also preferred among others. Even though he went through from being in the pit to uh, Potiphar's house, to the prison, to the palace, and becoming prime minister. That is only the effect of the chosen one. I'm going to pray for you now. So please, let's bow our heads and close our eyes with our hands stretched forward so we can receive from heaven. My Father, my God, I commit my brothers and my sisters into your hands. As they've bowed their heads and they close their eyes and open their hands to you, we ask, O oh God, that whatever has been holding us back from being the chosen one, that you will show us mercy in the mighty name of Jesus. You will please cleanse us afresh in the mighty name of Jesus with your blood. Anyone in here, O oh God, that needs to submit to you and stop playing church and stop playing about, Father, please today, touch their heart, O oh God, cleanse their heart, make them the chosen one, turn their situations around in the mighty name of Jesus. From now on, you, the God of wonders, let them start to experience the privileges of your wonder in the mighty name of Jesus. Let them have peace that passes all understanding. Let them have the ability to communicate to you and then hear back from you in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, please, oh God, give them the ability to enjoy the joys of your salvation, the benefits of your salvation. Let Jesus hold on to them and let them hold on to Jesus. And Lord, please, at the end of it all, don't let them miss your kingdom. Don't let them miss your eternal life that you've promised us. Thank you, almighty God. In Jesus' precious mighty name, we've prayed. Amen and amen and amen. If you chose to um, make a decision today to be the chosen one of God, please chat it into your, uh, type it into the chat box right now. Give us your full details so that Pastor Joe and team will be able to get in touch with you in case we need to push. If there's anything else you need to share with us, whatever you need to learn or speak about, restitution, to change um, patterns that you know has been holding you back in the past. There's an opportunity for that today. I pray that God will bless you, and God will bless me, God will bless all of us. And until we meet again, stay focused, stay humble, stay holy, stay happy, stay healthy, and stay heaven bound in Jesus' name. God bless you.